Michael is a 32-year-old Australian student who has recently returned to higher education to complete a PhD after a break of 10 years. His first class honours degree in English Literature ensured his acceptance into the prestigious doctoral program, including a full scholarship. During the last decade, Michael has worked in public relations and marketing, most recently as a marketing manager for a large publishing company. Although well paid and fairly satisfied with his career to date, Michael wants to fulfil his original ambition of becoming an academic. Michael has missed the university's orientation sessions for postgraduate students, but as a mature age student with an excellent academic background, he is confident that he will have no difficulties with his study. Michael is slightly surprised that he has no set classes, his supervisor does not set a regular meeting schedule, and she rarely responds to emails. Michael learns that his only requirement is that he must complete a research proposal for presentation within six months of starting at the university. Other than that, he is pretty much on his own. There are only two other PhD students in the English department and they rarely work on campus. Michael's days are unstructured and he feels like he is on holidays. He reads broadly and finds that his original idea for a topic has been extensively researched. He changes topic a number of times but finds it increasingly difficult to settle on a project. The months go by quickly and three weeks before the six month deadline, Michael's supervisor sends a short email reminding him that the research proposal is due. Although he hasn't written anything yet, Michael feels confident that he will be able to pull something together in time. After all, it's only a 30-page document and he used to knock reports up in a couple of days when he was working as a marketing manager. Unfortunately, a number of personal circumstances gets in the way, and with just a few days until the deadline, Michael puts in an all-nighter, just like he used to do as an undergraduate student. He cobbles together parts of his original honours thesis, interspersed with bits and pieces from unattributed online articles and internet sources. Although not completely satisfied with the final product, Michael submits the proposal with the view that his supervisor will probably provide feedback and make suggestions for revision anyway. He signs a cover sheet stating, I declare the work in this document to be my own, except where acknowledgement of sources is made, and authorising the university to check the assignment for plagiarism using text comparison software. The day before Michael is due to present his proposal, he receives a standard email from the Academic Integrity Decision Maker, stating that his work has been forwarded for investigation and that he will not be permitted to present the proposal as scheduled. When Michael contacts his supervisor, she refuses to speak to him, stating that university policy dictates that all correspondence relating to potential academic misconduct must be directed to the Academic Integrity Decision Maker. Michael is very anxious, as he has no comparable experience in his professional life or in his earlier studies. Rather than face an academic integrity inquiry, he withdraws from his candidature and resumes his former employment. 